Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to our Christmas Eve service. Thank you for being here. And a special welcome to all our preschool families and, and visitors here tonight. We're definitely looking forward uh, to the, the children's message that, that they're going to tell this morning. So very excited to have everyone. Um, in case it's not obvious, I'm filling in for Pastor tonight. Uh, he's been not feeling well the last few days. Uh, so. Please send him your prayers uh, so, that, so that he can recover quickly and, and be feeling better. Um, Lou's going to be reading a message that he's written for us this evening, so that'll take kind of the place of the sermon. Um, but otherwise, uh, we'll be following things kind of exactly as they are in the bulletin, so it should be pretty straightforward. Um, and then finally, I kind of wanted to remind everyone how the candle situation works. Um, so towards the end of the service, right before Silent Night, we'll be... Uh, if, if you don't have a candle, you can get one back in the, the narthex there. Um, but we'll be coming down the center aisles, and to light your candle, please put it sideways into the one that is, the unlit one sideways into the one that is lit uh, so that you don't drip wax everywhere. So uh, <clears throat> that should uh, keep things clean and, and keep it going well. So thank you again, everyone, for being here. Appreciate it. Of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. 
Tonight, we remember and celebrate the birth of Jesus, a Savior born to forgive our sins because we are in need of forgiveness. Therefore, let us come before our loving Savior, asking for the forgiveness that he offers to each of us. Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us, who has come to rescue you from our sins. Jesus has come to rescue you from your sins, and because of his death on the cross, your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good evening, everyone. If we could have all the children come up front with me. Come on. Come on up, Josie. Come on, girls. Come on up. Come on. Come and sit down. Hey, Bubba. Good job. They will come in. There you come. Come here, sweet pea. Come here, April. Come here. You take my hand. Would you come sit? Would you guys want to come sit right down here? I'm sorry. I got sidetracked there. Yeah. You want to bring him over again? Okay, come on up with me. There you go. Okay, sit down here. Come on down here, guys. Come and sit right here. Hey, uh, Maxwell, will you come and sit with me? Come and sit. Uh, hey, guys. I haven't seen you guys in a while. Oh, looky here. I say it, and there's Abel looking at me. Oh, come on, Max. I've got a story to tell you. Come and sit right over as close as you, you want to sit right here in front. There you go. Yes. Look at my book. Oh, it says, on Christmas, we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ, our Savior. And this is the story. Look at here. Look at, you know what this is? That's a stable. And right in front, just like behind you, there's a manger. Let's see what happens. Many years ago, a man named Joseph and his wife Mary lived in Nazareth. One day, they had to take a trip. Oh, look, here they come, I think. Do you see Mary and Joseph coming? Look back there. Mary rode on a donkey, and Joseph walked by her side. They came to a town called Bethlehem. They looked for a place to sleep. There were so many people. There was no room for Mary and Joseph. Finally, an innkeeper said they could stay in his stable. Joseph made a soft bed for Mary, and they lay down to sleep. Do you know what a stable is? Do you know what it is? Patrick, what's a stable? It's like a barn, isn't it? It's where the animals lived. What kind of animals, Max, do you think might have been in there? What kind of animal might have been in the stable? Maybe a cow? Or a horse? Maybe a donkey? What's a donkey say? What does a donkey say? No, that's a doggy. A donkey says, hee-haw. Yeah, that's what he said. Maybe some sheep. The animals lived in the stable. But that night, Mary and Joseph were in the stable. And look in front of them, Max. Max, well, look right in front of them. It's a manger. That's what the animals would eat out of. 
So Mary and Joseph were sleeping. Oh, look what happened. During the night, Mary's baby was born, and she wrapped him in soft cloths and laid him in the manger. And you know what she called him? What did she call him? Jesus, that's right. She called that baby Jesus. Oh, looky there. Mary had a baby. Do you know that song, Max? Mary had a baby, yes, Lord. Mary had a baby, yes, my Lord. Mary had a baby, yes, Lord. Baby Jesus in a manger, Bethlehem. Oh, look what we have here. In a field not far away, shepherds were watching their sheep. Suddenly, yes. Yes, you look very handsome, but look up here. Look at the shepherds. They were watching their sheep. And do you know what happened? There was an angel that appeared to them, and the shepherds were frightened. What do you think they did? I bet. You think they hid their eyes? Can you guys hide your eyes? Hide your eyes, Josie. Everybody. But do you know what the angel said? He said, don't be afraid. I have good news. Mary had a baby, and he's in a stable, in a manger in Bethlehem. And do you know what his name is? Jesus. His name is Jesus. Then there were many angels. And you know what they said? Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace and goodwill to men. Can we sing the Gloria? Can you do that? Make your mouth in a little O. The shepherds ran to Bethlehem. They were looking for the Savior. When the shepherds found the manger, they worshipped the baby. Looky here. In a little manger. Can we do that? Little manger far across the sea was a little baby just like you or me. That's right, look at him there. This is the Christmas story. Jesus Christ, our Savior, was born in Bethlehem and found lying in a manger. Can you kids all go up around and we're gonna welcome the baby. Can you go up there and stand around the baby and Mary and Joseph, stand up. That's it, stand up there for me. Now we're gonna welcome the baby. Do you remember the chant we do in preschool? It goes like this. I'll do it once with you and then I'll let you do it, okay? It goes, holy babe, holy babe, lying in a manger. Holy babe, holy babe, welcome little stranger. Can everyone do it with me now? The kids can do it and everybody out here too maybe. Let's do it. Holy babe, Holy babe, lying in a manger. Holy babe, holy babe, welcome little stranger. Very good. That is Patrick's mom and dad, and that's Patrick's little baby brother. And they did a wonderful job being our Mary and Joseph baby today, didn't they? It's been a long time since we had a live baby Jesus. Do, do you know what we're going to do now? We're going to sing Away in a Manger. Do you want to sit up here while we sing it before you go back? Or do you want to come sit down and we'll sing them? Everybody's going to sing it, not just us. Come and sit down, guys. We'll sing Away in a Manger. Come sit down.
Thank you, Miss Jane. Okay, do you guys want to go back and sit with your parents now while we finish? Thank you, guys. Thank you. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the end.
And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them.
my privilege to read a meditation offered by Pastor Mark. Uh, it's not a sermon. I am prepared to do a 30-minute reflection afterwards if you'd prefer. This is entitled, The Miracles of the Christmas Manger. Christmas is a story filled with miracles. Christmas is a story of God keeping his promises given hundreds and thousands of years before, now fulfilled in the birth of Jesus. If we pause and take time to observe a few details, we will see and be reminded of numerous miracles that God has done for you and me through the Christmas story, the birth of Jesus. This Christmas Eve, I invite you to see the miracles of the Christmas manger. And I want also to tell you that there will be copies of this meditation in the back on your way out, and I encourage you to take it home and read it. It uh, puts Christmas Eve in perspective. Miracle number one, the creator enters in. From C.S. Lewis, once in our world, a stable had something in it that was bigger than our whole world. The creator of the universe is lying in the Christmas manger. Here in the Christmas manger is Emmanuel, God himself with us. Jesus is the creator who enters into our joys and tears, celebrations and sorrows, to be with us, heal us, and redeem us. From Luke chapter two. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Jesus is the savior who was born for you. Jesus is the creator of the universe coming down from heaven to be with you so you can be with him for all eternity. Miracle two, good news for you. Jesus is Emmanuel for you. Jesus enters the sin and brokenness of this world to be your savior and redeemer. The child lying in the Christmas manger is your savior. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. How do the shepherds know the miracle is for them too? How do they know that Jesus is also their Savior? The answer is the Christmas manger. The answer the angels give to the shepherds is that the child they are looking for, the miracle they are waiting for, the Savior they are hoping for, is going to be found in the Christmas manger. Miracle number three, eternal life. From Martin Luther, no other God have I but thee, born in a manger, died on a tree. A brief word about the Christmas manger. First century feeding troughs or mangers were almost always built out of stone as it was highly prevalent and common for construction. When Mary laid Jesus in the manger, another way of reading or picturing it would be laid him in a manger cut from stone. Why does this matter? Because the ultimate miracle of the Christmas manger isn't the nativity, but the Easter tomb. There are two times where Jesus is wrapped in cloths and laid onto stone, the Christmas manger and the Easter tomb. Then he took the body of Jesus down and wrapped it in a linen shroud and laid him in a tomb cut in stone where no one had ever yet been laid. When we see the Christmas manger, St. Luke wants us to also see and look forward to the Easter tomb. The baby Jesus who was wrapped in cloths and laid in the Christmas manger is the same Jesus who died, was wrapped in cloths and laid in the Easter tomb for your salvation. This is the great Christmas miracle Jesus was born to live, die, and rise again to give you the gift of eternal life. From Matthew chapter one, she will bear a son and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Merry Christmas from Pastor Mark.
Please stand for a silent night. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. You can go ahead and extinguish your candles. <laughs> 